For this video, we'll be taking apart the iPhone 16e. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, there are two pentalope screws on the bottom which need to be removed. This phone can be taken apart from the back or the front, depending on which part you need replaced. For this video, I'll start off by removing the screen first. Heat needs to be applied to the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a suction cup tool and pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. The screen cannot be lifted open from the right to the left, but be careful since the flex cables for the screen are still attached to the main board. There are two tri-wing screws which need to be removed that are holding down the metal covers over the connectors. Here's a look at the back of the screen. There are two tri-point screws which are holding down the metal cover over the top. Once that's removed, we see a secondary microphone which is the gold piece, and next to that is a front light sensor. Now moving to the back, to remove the back plate or back cover, heat needs to be applied using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back cover off. The back cover can now be lifted up from the left to the right, but be careful since the cable is still attached to the main board. Five tri-wing screws need to be removed. To release and remove this metal shield, it first needs to be slid down and then it can be lifted up and removed. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Looking at the back cover, we see graphite film top transfer heat, and the wireless charging coil is located in the center. There are two additional tri-wing screws which need to be removed. Once that metal cover has been removed, we see the rear microphone, as well as the LED flash. There is also a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. Here's a look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera and face ID. In order to remove the battery, you'll need a 9 volt battery, which is ironic since you need a battery to remove a battery, but it does somewhat make it easier compared to adhesive to pry the battery off. You'll also need some alligator clips since you'll be attaching the 9 volt battery to the tab over here in order to debond the electrically conductive adhesive. Once the red alligator clip is attached to the tab and the black one is grounded to one of the screws, You'll need to wait about a minute and a half for the adhesive underneath the battery to debond.
and this is the 4005 milliamp hour battery. Now four standoff screws need to be removed, in addition to 10 Phillips screws. Here's a look at the 48 megapixel camera, which has OIS or optical image stabilization. To completely remove the speaker assembly on top, there is another Phillips screw on the top rim of the frame which needs to be removed. There's an antenna flex cable assembly over the top speaker, and there's a rubber gasket over the opening of the speaker. This is the Taptic Feedback or Vibrator Motor. There's an additional standoff screw holding down the motherboard. Here's a closer look at the motherboard. There's graphite film and copper tape on the back shield to help transfer heat. At this point, there are two additional standoff screws, five tri-wing screws, two of which are on the side of the frame, and four Phillips screws which need to be removed. This is the bottom speaker assembly. And there's a mesh filter over the opening of the speaker. Two more standoff screws need to be removed. And here's a look at the bottom microphone assembly. This is a placeholder for a SIM reader for versions of the phone which would come with a SIM reader. There's one last standoff screw. There's one more tri-wing or tri-tip screws on the frame and two more Phillips screws on the frame which need to be removed. This is the charger port flex cable, which has an additional microphone on this corner. As for replacing or removing the flex cables or the buttons on either side, there are some additional Phillips screws on each side which need to be removed. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 7.5 out of 10. The reason I don't give it a 2 out of 2 for the battery replacement is because not everyone will have alligator clips or a 9 volt battery at home, so it does somewhat take an additional step to remove the battery. However, removing the battery is not difficult at all if you have the proper tools. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.